Now, there's nothing wrong with this. But wouldn't you also like to be able to do this? That's what we're going to be working on today. My name's Adam Manis, and these are the sugar chords. Why do we call them the sugar chords? Because they're so sweet. So here's how we get that sweet, sweet sound. We get it with three different chord voicing structures. You probably have at least heard of all of these, but you might not know how you can use them together to create such a sweet sound. Uh, so there are three different voicing structures. There's closed voicings. Uh, just regular closed, four-way closed, or maybe locked hand voicings, depending on how we need them. And then there's two different open voicings, drop two and drop three. That'll be the first thing that we talk about. And we're going to take the B section of the standard on Green Dolphin Street. We're going to take that B section, what I just played here in the intro, and we're going to take it through closed voicings, drop two and drop three. And then we're going to mix them and match them, and we get that sweet, sweet sugar sound. It's really, really smooth and delicious and I'm exhausting my baking metaphors, but you get the idea. And why would we want to use this? Well, besides just sounding great in general, it, it serves some really cool practical purposes. First, it gets us some different kinds of textures, right? We, we can just get away from one kind of voicing sound mixing and matching these three different kinds of things. Second, it really helps with some voice leading, especially in that inner voice movement. If you just stick to closed voicings, or you just stick to drop two, everything's gonna be moving in the same direction, but when you mix and match, you can have some contrary motion as well as parallel motion, and you can use that to great effect. And then third is the range, especially if you're playing solo piano, it really helps. If you have your hands really close together, you can use closed voicings. The further out you go, drop two. The further out from there, maybe some drop three, maybe some drop two within a spread voicing. All of that is good to know and very, very useful when we're playing in that style. All right, let's get right to it. Before we do, just so you know, uh, this video is sponsored by Open Studio. Of course it is. Go to openstudiojazz.com to learn more and download the PDF because there's a really great looking PDF here that's yours to keep. It's for free. It's right there in the description. Let's get started. All right, before we get to On Green Dolphin Street, let's just have a look here at what closed voicings are drop two and drop three. In this context, I'm gonna use big five note voicings in two hands, as you see here, just a C major nine to start it off. So we have the root in our left hand. Now notice the root of all of these chords. It's really not connected to the structure that you might call closed drop two, drop threes. In other words, we have our C major nine. I've got my closed voicing on top. Everything is as close as it can be, except for the root, which will give license to be in whatever octave we need it in. As we're kind of, you know, when we're playing solo piano, uh, we're, we're providing the bass to the situation. So we have to have some freedom there. Now, if you are rootless, if you're playing with a bass player and you don't want to throw in a root, which by the way, you can use a root when you're playing with a bass player, but if you don't want to, simply let go of the root and just play the four note close. Uh, in that case, you might do something like a locked hands. Uh, we use it a little bit in the, in the examples I'll give later, but uh, for our purposes today, this is the structure. So here's our closed voicings, right? Everything in the chord, the third, fifth, seventh, and ninth is as close as possible. Drop two, we take the second note from the top, no matter what it is, in this case, it's the seventh, the B, we drop it down an octave, we put it in the left hand, and lo and behold, we've got this beautiful voicing. Look at this. Now notice how uh, everything's spread out here. There's a big spread between the root and the seventh, and then there's uh, a fourth, a third, and a fifth, a big spread at the top as well, right? That's important because it's a different sound than the next structure, which is drop three. Drop three is where we take that closed voicing, the third note from the top, the G in this case, we drop down in the left hand, we take it out of the right. Okay, now we have a bigger spread in the middle here. We've got, look at this, we've got a sixth right in the middle and then a fifth. It's a whole different sound. Listen to the difference, same notes. There's more of a crunch at the top. Pretty interesting, right? So those are the three structures we're using. Pretty simple. We know these in all inversions, we work on them in every key. You can take it through your favorite tunes, uh, kind of like what we're about to do. Let's check out On Green Dolphin Street. So here are bars nine through 12 of On Green Dolphin Street, right? That first B section. We're in the key of E flat. If you don't play On Green Dolphin Street in the key of E flat, I encourage you to try it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and it sounds like this, just melody root, right? 
Now, what we're gonna be using today to build our chords are a couple of six diminished scales. The famous Barry Harris six diminished scale. We work on it all the time over here on Open Studio. You probably know what it is. I'm not gonna go into a detailed description of the six diminished scale for this exercise. This is more about the voicing structure than it is about what notes we're choosing. But just so you know here, and I'll keep these up on each one, uh, on the melody here, on the F minor seven, and the first half of the B flat seven, we're using an A flat six diminished scale. All right, six diminished, six diminished, right? You probably know already all this. It gives us a nice F minor seven sound, and the diminished give, give us a nice C seven flat nine sound, right? So uh, when we play this, uh, we'll be using, play through that melody, we'll be using the A flat six diminished. When we get to the uh, to these altered notes here, we're gonna be using the B minor six diminished, right? Which is B minor six, and it's diminished in inversions. We're gonna be borrowing notes. If you wanna learn more, we got a ton of recent videos all about the six diminished. Go check out the channel uh, and and you can get a, a deeper understanding of that. But that's not really what this is about. You, you might learn a little from osmosis today as that's what we're gonna be dealing with. And then the E flat major, it's just the E flat six diminished. You know, that old chestnut. It's all the same stuff. So that's where we're starting from. Now let's go to our first structure, closed voicing. Okay, using our first structure of closed voicings, everything as close together as possible. Every note is in the right hand, and we're gonna be using our six diminished scales that I have here to determine what notes to play, what chords to voice. Already, this is beautiful here. We're doing some borrowing from the diminished on some of the major chords, uh, on some of the dominant chords. Uh, just some notation notes. I'm kind of notating it with the six diminished chords in mind. It's gonna get confusing no matter what. So I'm doing my best here to make it clear. And it might even change as we go, depending on how I wanna shape the lines. There might be some inharmonic problems. You're gonna have to deal with it. I'm gonna have to deal with it. We'll make it work. Anyway, so here we are, right? We're voicing with the diminished here on the first note because it's a B, right? And B diminished, A flat six, all closed voicings. B diminished, A flat six, B diminished. Then we get to the B seven, right? B minor six, and then we're gonna just borrow up these top two notes uh, to the C sharp diminished. Right? We're just borrowing those top two notes from the diminished of the B minor six diminished. E flat six, here we're borrowing this D and F from its diminished and we'll resolve them to the six, the six diminished. But what we really wanna talk about here is the structure. Everything is closed. Everything is as close together as possible. It gets us that, that saxophone section sound that you might hear, hear the most basic version of this. sounds great. There's nothing wrong with it. This is one uh, arm of what we're going to be working with here. Uh, and we need to know these closed voicings because like I said, when the hands get tight together, these are super valuable. When things get low, you don't want big spread voicings drop three down here. You want to keep things nice and tight and punchy. So these are just as important as anything else. And it's how we're going to be basing what we do on every structure after this. Okay, so that's the first structure, the closed voicing. Let's check out how this sounds with drop two. Okay, the same passage, bars nine through 12, uh, with the same six diminished scales that we're using. We're still starting on the diminished here, but we're gonna use a drop two structure. So instead of the closed voicings, we're gonna take the second from the top note of each one of those closed voicings, and we're gonna put it in left hand, an octave lower. Again, that sounds amazing. It's a whole other sound though. Here's the close. Here's the drop two. I always say that the drop two, it's a tenths delivery device, right? It's a, it's a way to deliver tenths to your listener because look at the top note and look at what the left hand is playing the drop two note, right? They're always, or almost always, a tenth away. We 
which is just beautiful. It gets us that nice tense sound, which is gorgeous. So there's drop two. Let's try it one more time. Just so beautiful, right? Voicing each note of this melody using these just three different six diminished chords. We're borrowing from uh, adjacent uh, chords on the six diminished scale. It's just beautiful. Now let's check out the third structure, drop three. Before we do, if this is something that you might be interested in, go ahead and click the like button. Let us know that this is your jam. Uh, if this is your first time here, why not subscribe? We're having a good time nerding out on stuff like this all the time. So come join us here on the Open Studio YouTube channel and get your nerd on. All right, let's move on to the third structure of the sugar chords. Uh, these are the drop threes. I get asked about these all the time. What's the drop three? What's the difference between drop two and drop three and how do I use it? Um, so it's really the same concept. Uh, you know, we have our closed voicings here. We take our D flat diminished shape that we were using. We just, instead of dropping the second note from the top, like drop two, you drop the third note from the top, in this case an E natural, and that's drop three. And we can do the whole passage in drop three. Check it out. How great is that? Isn't that beautiful? Let's hear that again. Give the cellist some, you know, give that tenor some. So here's drop two, just so you can hear the difference real, real quick. And here's drop three. Here's closed voicings. Here's drop three. I love it. I do. I just picture the cellist down there, you know, really working hard or maybe the violist uh, in this case could get those and really getting, you know, bringing out the meat of that tenor region. Drop three is so great for that. Uh, so that's drop three. That's the difference between uh, closed voicings, drop two and drop three. So here's where the sugar comes in. Here's where it gets sweet. Let's combine everything together and let the magic happen. So here again, Bars 9 through 12 of On Green Dolphin Street, right? The first B section. And uh, we're going to combine everything together. There's going to be a couple things that you might notice that you can take to any other passage or you're comping or playing through any melody or improvising, whatever you want to use these for. So same thing. We're using the same six diminished scales, but now we're going to start here on drop three and check it out. Same melody, closed. I'm going to do a, a little locked hand thing I didn't do before, but just doubling the melody, bringing just so my left hand has something to do. And also to create uh, some contrary motion here. Check it out. Drop three, closed, drop two, drop three, closed, drop two, drop three, drop two. Right, so this is something that you will see a lot of. You see this in uh, orchestration and arranging and co composition to really, really great pianists. Uh, it happens right there on the second uh, chord there of the first bar. Closed, drop two, drop three, this. Why is that so effective? Well, the outside notes are moving in a contrary motion. You still have all this great voice leading on the inside. Closed, drop two, drop three, and then we're gonna do it again. Closed, drop two, drop three. All right, so look, look at that tenor line. We just created a counter melody by using these three different voicing structures. And you can do it in an opposite way, right? So if you're going from, like we can just simply reverse this, but Right? Drop three, drop two, when you're going in contrary motion inside. Beautiful, right? Isn't that so gorgeous? Let's try it. Let's try it playing in time. One, two, three, and... Again, one, two, three, and... I 
more time. Two, three, and... That's where the sugar comes in. That's where life and music and voicings get sweet. This is where it pays to be a nerd because that kind of stuff can really uh, make your your solo piano arrangements and even just your your playing in general so much sweeter, so much uh, more interesting. Um, of course, we can use the same style of voicing. And it sounds great. Just closed voicings. Nothing wrong with that. We can use drop two. Everything moving along the same path. You can even use drop three. Sounds great, right? Nothing wrong with it. But combining them together... That's where some good stuff comes in. And hey, listen. Also, you do not have to be all that rigid with this either. You do not have to be like, I'm going to structure this and drop three, drop two, and then closed voicings at all. Eventually, you just start making up your own counter melodies and own little inner voice movement. But using these set structures can be a great way to dip your toe into it, right? Because it kind of gives you all of that uh, ready-made. You can really explore some different voice leading options. This is how everybody's been voicing harmony for like hundreds of years. Uh, and so it's fun to really put the time in and explore what you can do with a simple little four bar passage. This whole session uh, was just exploring a little two, five, one on Green Dolphin Street. You know what I'm saying? So much to go through. There's, this is a great part about being a musician, isn't it? It's like there's a lifetime of stuff to just keep poking around with and exploring and learning and having fun with. So uh, check out the PDF, like I said, uh, and enjoy that. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the chat here. Thanks, y'all. Until next time, happy practicing.